thank you for this wonderful day. This, this day that we'll never see again. God, everything is predetermined to give you glory when we get ourselves out of the way. So God, this wonderful day with beautiful sunshine and glory, we give you honor and praise. So God, center ourselves in you. Let us push aside all the distractions that could happen and let us know that you are here because you said where two or three are gathered, there you are in the midst of us. And God, there's many more than two or three people. So we thank you, God, that you are here with us. And we praise you, God, as we lift our hands and our hearts in worship. Truly the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Let us all greet one another with these words. May the peace of Christ be with you. The heavens are telling the glory of God. May our worship reflect God's glory. The firmament proclaims God's handiwork. May we see each other as the handiwork of God. Let our prayer and praise, our singing and proclamation, project the love of God. We commune with Christians around the world, with Christians throughout time. With Christians across geography and across time. Let us worship. Then we are opening hymn number 504 in the United Methodist Hymnal, Old Rugged Cross. 504.
Incline your hearts to the wisdom of God. Seek integrity and understanding. The testimonies of God are wonderful. God's law gives light to all who hear it. If you accept God's words and store up God's commandment within you, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth and from his mouth comes tr truth and understanding. God holds victory in store for the upright and is a shield to those whose walk is blameless. Amen. And our prayer response this morning is found in the Faith We Sing 2004, Praise the Source of Faith and Learning. Old Testament lesson this morning comes from the 91st Psalm. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is nor speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out 
through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens, he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The New Testament lesson is 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 18 through 25. The message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction. But we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. As the scriptures say, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. So where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars, and the world's brilliant debaters? God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. Since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom, he has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. It is foolish to the Jews who ask for signs from heaven. And it is foolish to the Greeks who seek human wisdom. So when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended and the Gentiles say it's all nonsense. But to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. This foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans. And God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. This is the word of God to the people of God. Lord God, we declare that we are foolish for you, God. Not foolish in being utterly, utterly full of nonsense, but we have given away our wisdom that we may have your wisdom, God. Help us understand the foolishness of preaching that we may grasp your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding and see as you see and know as you know and believe as you have us to believe that we are fearfully and wonderfully made God and we are made to be your hands and feet and we would spread the kingdom of God in this entire realm. Give us the strength to do so and the wisdom to do so. Guide our hands and our feet that we may be your people. In the precious name of your son, Jesus, amen and amen. 
Divisions in the church are nothing new. In our scripture today, Paul addresses such division and points us to God's wisdom. Paul in his second missionary journey created a church in Corinth. The interesting thing about the epistle to the Corinthians is that it is written, it seems as if it is written directly for us. The Corinthian church was established in an area that was known for its commerce. So it had all of the issues that we have today. They had secular notions infused in their church. In the beginning of this epistle, Paul sets this, the tone by saying that God's wisdom is the only wisdom that is needed. God asks the questions of the Corinthians, is Christ divided? Was I, Paul, crucified for you? I baptized none, but then he corrected himself and said, yeah, yeah, I guess I did baptize one, but mostly I preached the gospel. Paul was dealing with a group of people who believed that everyone had the wisdom and the knowledge to live other than by Christ. The secular world had indoctrinated them into belief that their ways were right. But what Paul had to do was compare the secular wisdom to the foolishness of preaching the gospel. Paul asked, where's the wise man? Where is the scholar? In asking that question, Paul is asking them to consider the wisdom of the world and the world's logic that they used for their everyday life, that that wisdom actually did not lead to salvation. Paul stresses that understanding and reasoning and knowledge cannot get you to know God any better. Paul reminds them that though they are wise and, and studied and wise to the world, their life may not have been any closer to God. God, Paul reminded them that it was the foolishness of preaching that changed their lives forever. It was not until somebody preached to them that their lives, their eyes were open to the new life. So I need to ask you today, what is the difference between preaching and expository writing or lectures or seminars? What makes preaching, preaching? The answer is not just the subject matter. You would say, oh, okay, well, it's preaching when you're talking about Christ and Christ alone. But it's not just that. It's not just talking about Christ alone. When one preaches the good news, we're preaching about Christ being crucified, buried, but rising again. What makes this actually the good news? The simple message is that the creator of the world knows your on your head. God knew you when you were born. In fact, God had a plan for you before you were in your mother's womb. God understood who you would be and who you are. God had everything you need. So guess what, people of God? We are not mistakes. We were not just an oops by a man and a woman. The date, the time, the year you were born, the environment, the place that you live is not a mistake. Now, for some of us, that's going to be hard to hear because we've not all had good lives. 
We've not all had loving, caring, concerning parents. Sometimes our environments were harsh. Sometimes we were hungry. Sometimes we were misplaced. Sometimes our life, even as a child, seemed to have not be full of God. But God promised that God knew who you were. God promised that you would have everything in your life that you would need. God knew the starved dust from which you were born. Until you're old enough to decide your life, and even afterwards, God continues to whisper in your ears your direction and your purpose. Think about it. Think about the times that stuff went wrong about the times that you made a decision and you knew it was not the right one, but you decided to do it anyway. There are times when we went left when God wanted you to go right, but God still didn't leave you there. There will come a day, however, when you stop listening to those quote, demons in your head that tells you to do wrong when you know to do right. There comes a day when someone whispers to you and says, you know, you know, everything in your life does not have to be bad. You stop listening to the destructive things in your life and you listen to somebody's whisper. That's the day that God makes God's self known to you. You're gonna come to a, a crossroads, everyone does, and you have to decide which way you will go. Like the prodigal son, when we're trying to go our own way, we will come to an aha moment where we say, Maybe, just maybe, that time God opens a door, offers you a way out, a way back, a way to God. Now, this way may be hard. It may be challenging. It may even be painful. But the day that you decide, God, I'm going to believe that you exist. There's got to be a better way. The day that you say, God, you're real. Help me. Is the day that salvation enters your life. The good news, the gospel, is that once you accept that God has created you and that God knows you and God loves you, your life will be forever changed. God has the best for you. When we know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, even if the world says we have a disability, you are made for God's purpose and God loves you. When you Accept that you are loved by God. You get that idea in your head that maybe, just maybe, the world is not so horrible at all. What preaching does is remind us the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, not after you're dead. Now, most gifted preachers, they have that command of the English, English language, but the gift is that what they're supposed to do is point you, point me, point us to the living God. It is the preacher's belief. In other words, whether or not they actually believe the good news for their own life that makes them a preacher. Now, recognize that all, not all preachers are in a pulpit. In fact, some of the most believable preachers 
or in grocery stores or in the, in the lines at the bank or the cafeteria workers. <clears throat> They're just ordinary everyday people. The preacher is a person who believes their narrative and is willing to tell everyone how good God is. It's not so much the talking as the fact that they can share what they believe, share the good news that God loves them in an unexplicable, unexplainable way. Now, this actually is the foolishness of preaching the gospel. Everybody had to have those good news, talk to them, spoken to them at somebody by some person. It, it might be an old grandmother. It may be the, the drunk on the street, but it is someone who's willing to share how God loves them. When that good news resonates in your soul and you hear it, you follow it, you believe it and you walk from death to life, the kingdom of God is yours. This is that gospel that Paul is talking about. It's not necessarily logical. Recognize learning to love like God loves can sometimes be irrational. Jesus says that if somebody strikes you on the cheek, what do you do? You turn the other cheek. God says, pray for those who despitefully use you. God says, when somebody asks you to walk a mile, you walk too. Some, Jesus even tells us to love our enemies and pray for them. We are taught to forgive others. Why? Because Jesus and God loves and forg has forgiven us. It doesn't make sense to give grace to people who screw up every day, all the time. It doesn't make sense. <clears throat> Yet this is what God's love demands. Paul addresses Jews and Gentiles. He says that the Jews, it is an offense, this cross of Christ, because how can God actually die? And to the Gentiles, they're trying to figure out how is this logical? But God's wisdom and logic is so far above us that we can't often understand what God is saying. When we preach Christ crucified, we're telling people that God, who is divine, loves us so much that he gave part of himself to humanity in the form of Jesus and allowed that God man to experience, <laughs> to experience everything that we have experienced. You see, Jesus was angered. He was hungry, he was cold, he was, de de he was betrayed, he was crucified, he was tortured, he died, even the death on the cross for us. Yet this God man who was fully divine, yet fully human, chose to experience it so that we can figure out that we can as well. We can have this hope that we can live in complete our harmony with the creator of the universe. That life that exists is not all there is. There is hope. <clears throat> Paul states that Christ is a stumbling black to the Jews. Christ is illogical, illogical to the Gentiles. Nevertheless, the cross, the gospel that we preach is our pathway to everlasting life. 
as Paul says, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is God's power. Are you, am I, willing to look foolish in this world to bring one person, one person into the joy that you share? How much of this gospel do you really believe? I have to ask myself that every day. God, do I really believe what you say? That I have everything I need? God, do I really believe that I'm going to be okay? Do I really believe that everything is going to work out for my good? Do you believe that you are perfectly and wonderfully made? Do you believe that you, that I, that we all have a purpose that only you can fulfill? Do you believe that God knows everything about you, even when you're screwing up, even when you choose to do what God has not called you to do? Do you know and that God still loves you? God cares for you. God wants you to live in wisdom. God wants you to be happy, to be content, to be satisfied in God. That God wants you to feel fullness of joy every day. When you wake up in the morning, God is there with you and is whispering to you in the morning. Are you believed? that God is so awesome that God created you to be wonderful. If you answer, are you, if you answered yes to all of that, are you willing to allow the foolishness of preaching the gospel to so permeate your life that you would be able to and willing not just able, but willing to tell others how God loves them. Remember, every preacher is not in a pulpit. In fact, most preachers are not. Most preachers are right inside of you. Most preachers are right next to you. St. Francis of Assisi, reportedly said to preach the gospel at all times and if necessary, use words. Make your life the foolish gospel of Jesus Christ that others may see your life and come to life and live. Amen, people of God, amen. There was a time in my life I felt so all alone Didn't have anyone to call my own. That's when you came my way just to let me know I'd always have a place to go. When my life was bound in chains, you set me free. God keeps on making a way for me. 
Sometimes on this road, facing back, it can make you feel downtrodden and sad. But when I need you the most, you always come through. God's done everything he said he would do. When my life was bound, bound in chains, you set me free. God keeps on making a way for me. Me. Making a way for me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God keeps on making a way for me. When we are willing to preach the good news that God loves us, God continues to make a way for us. Amen. 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 This is time for our offering. We respond to God's word through our faithful giving. You may give your offering online at the link that is there. It allows us to continue to be in mission, to be foolish for Christ, to give our love away to others. We appreciate you, Old Audubon, that you are faithful givers, that you are the foolishness of God. Yet you are God's love to people. We thank you for your offering and everything that you continue to do. Amen. Now it's time for the announcements. We ask that you continue to pray for everyone in our prayer list. We're continuing to get prayers answered because God loves us so much that God hears our faintless, faintest prayer. So for those who understand the power of prayer, make sure that you print out the prayer list and continue to pray throughout the week. Amen. We will continue with virtual worship services, but as you can see, we on Mondays, I'm sorry, on the first and third Sundays, we'll be uh, broadcasting in the sanctuary. We're looking forward to the day that we will all be together again, especially as we're more and more getting vaccinated. We're looking forward to that day that we have some form of Im immunity. But until that time, 
continue to give online as you have done so, so faithfully. The, uh, the site now is oldaudubine250.org, donate. Everything that you're given has given, has allowed us to continue to in, in ministry, not just for the upkeep, but also the outreach that you are so faithful in doing, amen. You can go up a little bit. Amen. We still have noonday prayers on uh, Wednesday at noon. I sit there and I, I'm waiting for to hear from you. The number is 701 that is there. The access code is there. It is free. Uh, even for those who have uh, risk restricted numbers, it is a uh, prayer line. So you are free to call in. And we are waiting to hear from you, amen. Our first quarter mission is the Pro Bono Resource Center of Maryland. And um, we are continue to be in ministry to that and uh, who provides uh, lawyers to get uh, support for rent court and um, also to invict for evictions and for people who need legal services, amen. Uh, if shopping on old on Amazon, as some of us do, please designate Old Audubon Smile as your charity. The uh, link is the Old Audubon Baltimore United Methodist Church. You, it won't cost you anything, but the church receives a percentage of the sales. And as you know, that if, if everybody uh, gives us five cents, that five cents adds up and allows us to do even more ministry to the church, amen. We would love for you to share your old Audubon story. Next week, it will, yeah, next Sunday, it will be Dan. And then after that, there are others who are willing to share your story. You never, you become that preacher to allow people to understand not only um, what God has done for you, but how the community of old Audubon has moved and inspired you. So please share your story. You can uh, let Bet Betty or uh, me know, and we will definitely give you a chance to allow, to allow us to see how old Audubon has impacted you. On uh, Thursdays, we have our uh, Bible study. It is fear of the other. We encourage you to come. It, the, the link does not change. It is, it is very, we're very much staying to an hour. Um, there is a video in, embedded in, in between, between with a, uh, a passage that we discussed. And in this discussion, we talked about how God is truly the only one who is the other, and we are all trying to be like God. So if you want to be a part of this discussion, so please, uh, uh, you can go to our website and jo join in on uh, Thursdays at seven o'clock. Um, the last uh, announcement, as you can pull it down, is next Sunday, if you can pull it down some, please. Next Sunday after service, we invite you to stay a little while for it takes about a half an hour to the Empower to End Opioid uh, Initiative. It is a pilot program that we have chosen we have been chosen to do because of where we are. We are uniquely situated in the heart of the city. And as you understand that we have a, a large unhoused uh, population around our church. And so we need to be able to be educated about what's going on with the opioid st stimulant uh, usage in this population. Um, just if you would stay a little bit after, again, it is only about half an hour uh, for a, uh, a educational presentation. 
that is sponsored by the American Heart uh, Association and also by the Central Area Health Education Consortium. They are doing this to help us understand what's around us and be the preachers that we actually already are. So this ends the announcements for this week, unless there are any more. So it's now time for our prayer request, our joys and our concerns. Underst and you can unmute yourself as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we and forgive we those who trespass against, against us. And, and lead us lead not into temptation, into temptation but, but deliver but us from us evil. evil. For thine For is, the kingdom, is the kingdom, and the power, and, and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Yes, we have to mute now. And please join me in our closing hymn, which will be number 577 in the United Methodist Hymnal, God of Grace and God of Glory. Let us bow our hearts as we pray the benediction. Creator God, as we return now to our homes, workplaces, and communities, may your spirit open our eyes to the vastness and splendor of your beauty all around us. May we hear and smell 
and touch and see your glory evident in all of your creation. Above all, let us see your beauty even in the brokenness of our brothers and sisters, all of them created in your image and waiting to experience that redemption that comes only through Christ Jesus, our Lord. We go now to love and serve the Lord our God. Amen and amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful